and welcome to the Republica Unicornia podcast. I'm Kathleen. I'm the head yarn wench at Republica Unicornia Yarns. I am an indie dyer. I am a bag maker. I am a garment sewist. I don't sell that, but I sell the other stuff. And I am claiming my little corner of the internet to talk about all of the fun stuff that I'm up to. If you are returning for this, our second episode, welcome back, you wonderful weirdos. I am... <laughs> I'm so much more nervous for the second time doing this than I was for the first one because, like, there are, you know, more than two people possibly watching this. So, hi! If you are new here, welcome! Buckle up! It's going to be a lot of hyperactive chihuahua crafting energy, so if you are looking for something soothing, you're probably going to want to keep going because I am not soothing. But I have lots of fun stuff to talk about. I have shameless self-promotion stuff, shop things, finally. <laughs> I have a little, a wee bit of knitting and a wee bit of knitting plans, and I have a little bit of sewing, so things to talk about. Um, I am going to start off with what I am wearing. I am wearing the, I will talk about this in lots of detail soon, I promise, um, my newest blouse that I am absolutely obsessed with. This is the Smooth Sailing Blouse by Wearing History, and again, I will talk about it a lot. Um, I am also wearing the, uh, I'm going to stand up and look awkward. Ready? Yeah, buddy. Um, these are the True Bias Riley overalls, which I wore in the last episode, just in a different color. I definitely make a bunch of things in the same color and love them. And I would say that I wear other things, but I really don't in the winter. Um, these are amazing. They're a, they're a little darker on camera than they are in real life. They're a olive green corduroy, and I didn't like the color. And then I made them, and I wear them all the time, and I love them, and I love corduroy. I am also wearing, I made this, um, this is the Juliet Headband by Ash Christine Designs. All of this will be linked in the show notes. I haven't gotten fancy with, like, inserting the project pages and all that kind of stuff, so if you would like to know patterns, where stuff comes from, all of that will be down below in the show notes. So this is the Juliet Headband by Ash Christine Designs. I made... Like a lot of these in lockdown in 2020 because I used just a little bit of yarn they were really fast and really satisfying and in 2020 I decided that I was going I like really wanted to start thinking about dressing more vintage which I've always thought about but I really wanted to kind of go in 30s 40s and uh, we'll talk more about this in a little bit but I made all these headbands and then realized that like they didn't look good with any of my clothes and then I learned how to sew and now they do I have, I think I have like four or five of them. They're really fun. It's a lace panel. It's like a lace, a flat lace panel. And you make the bow. And there's, I think there's a, is there a button somewhere? I can't, I can't remember. I mean, I made them three years ago. But it's a great little project. It uses just a little bit of yarn. So if you have fingering weight from like socks or whatever left over, you can do that. And they are so perfect with my current wardrobe project. And they are getting a lot of wear. So that is what is on my person. I am <coughs> drinking <laughs> drinking and choking on herbal tea because the last thing I need before I talk to the internet about my craft adventures is more caffeine so I'm back I had to cough because I was choking on tea so uh first I'm gonna start off with business things so I don't want this to be a commercial for my business but the truth is I make a lot of stuff for my business so there will be some shameless self-promotion then we'll get into the like fun not-for-profit things. Um, so I have been actually back at work. I pretty much stop every year, like mid-December, I stop being in production mode. Everything kind of slows down. I'm exhausted. Everyone's exhausted. The holidays happen. And then after the holidays, it's January. And I hate January. I also hate February, but I hate January a lot. And I just, it, it always takes me about until now, till like the end of January, to start thinking about getting going on things again. So I just decided to not beat myself up about it this year and I just waited and then lo and behold, same time as every year, I was ready to get back to it. So I spent this week doing sewing bag things. They're not all bags. You'll see, you'll see. Um, I designed all of these early on in the business and they are all made to use fabric really efficiently. It was kind of leftovers from my standard bag designs. And they're a lot of work. 
and they take a lot of time and I spent all week sewing and these are not the kind of things like I can't I'm one person and I do everything it is unusual for a dyer who is as established as I am not like I'm a big deal but like I've been doing this for five years now to also still make project bags that is something that a lot of newbie dyers do when they first start out and I just like doing both I've always liked dyeing yarn and I like making project bags however I don't have the time or energy to spend on the construction of fiddly little things because um, it gets in the way of things that I can do that actually bring in more revenue. This is like a very boring business thing about being one person. So I, th what you're about to see, there, these will be going into my next shop update, which, by the way, is February the 23rd, Thursday, February the 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That sounds like a long way out, but when you have to make everything, it doesn't feel like a long way out. So mark your calendar, sign up for the newsletter that's on my website. You can sign up for the newsletter. I usually send out a couple of newsletters. Like I send up usually one like the week before, the week of, and then when a shop update goes live. Also on Instagram, I put reminders, I put countdowns and stories. Seriously, y'all, I wanna make sure that you know when the shop update is. So if you don't see it one place, it'll be like 12 others. Um, so all of this is going to be going into that shop update. This is the kind of stuff that I'm not sure how much in the future I will be making, if at all. I was sewing tea cozies last night and I was like, mm, I don't know about this. So all that to say, this is not like a FOMO thing. This is just a, like, I have to prioritize my time and energy and sewing is really, really time consuming as anyone who sews knows. I don't feel it so much on my regular big project bags. Um, because I can sell them at a price point that makes their the time that goes into them make sense. But if I'm trying, like people think, and not everybody, but you know, if something's smaller, we all feel like it should cost less. And so I spend the same amount or more time on the things that I charge $30 for than the things that I charge $48 for. And like, I just, I can't do that. I did some math yesterday and the potential revenue from this is very boring business talk but whatever you know what i'm all about transparency i can make the revenue is three times as much from a single die day as it is from all of the sewing that i did this week so there's that but i really really am proud of these things and i like making them and i know y'all like using them i i like them that's why i designed them so anyway that that is a little bit of background on what is going on here now let's actually see cute, fun things. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start off with, there's only four of these going in. I'm not gonna show all of the fabrics and stuff because that is going to be so long. Um, but I am going to show you, I will have tea cozies. There are four of these. There are two, oh, come on, focus. Seriously, maybe if it thinks it's my face. Ha <laughs> ha. So um, this is a tea cozy for all you tea drinkers, which I am. It is uh, insulated, it has, I think it's fusible fleece and it has cotton polyester batting in it. And it really, they really do keep your pot of tea warm. We use one every single morning. It is the, like, I think it was one of the prototypes that I made years ago and it is still going strong. So they have elastic on the bottom, so they fit, oh, this is my biggest teapot. They fit a wide range of teapots. This is, I think, a six cup teapot. I hate it, by the way. I mean, I love it, it's beautiful, but it like, barfs tea because the spout's too not angled enough anyway so this is on our on my biggest teapot I also have we normally use a I think it's a four cup and it fits on that too so they're made to fit a wide variety they have a drawstring at the top I don't like the ones that are slip over because they sometimes cover sometimes they just cover up the spout and you can't pour but this way you can just oh my gosh sorry about the focus there we go Okay, so that is, those are going in. So there's a cup, there's, I might actually show these because there's only four. There's two of this print with the teacups on it. Oh, they're also fully reversible if you don't like fun. The inside fabric's not as fun. So if you decide you don't want fun, you can use, you can flip them and they're reversible. Um, okay, I am going to show these because there's only four different prints. So uh, there's two of that one going in. Again, this is like a month out. You don't have to remember this. I'm just showing you what I've been up to. Uh, Robert Smith from The Cure. Hell yeah. 
I laughed so hard when I finished this and put it on a teapot. It might be the most ridiculous thing I've ever made, which is really saying something. So uh, Robert Smith's going in. I also, FYI, it won't go in this next shop update, but in the future, I did order more of this fabric because it's so great and it's a purple background. So there will be more Robert Smith bags and things in the future. So there's Robert Smith. And then Sneels. So those are the tea cozies. So there's the fewest number of those. Um, the other thing, oh geez, oh geez. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this whole stack. Um, I wanted to make these, I don't know what got in my, I was like using one, I don't know. This is not a Kathleen original design. This is a tutorial from the Crafty Gemini on YouTube. So if you sew and you wanna make these, go to town. All of my other bags are designed by me and I don't sell the patterns cause no one would want my pattern writing. So, um, I don't share that stuff, but if you want to make these, go for it. So, um, these are microwavable bowl cozies. Um, I made them. So this is a, I have all of my lap and they're falling. Um, so here they are. This one has Pegasus's Pegasi on it. Oh my gosh. This camera and I, okay, there we go. So, um, there are quite a few of these. So they hold your bowls. I also made them with entirely cotton batting and I sourced really good expensive cotton batting for these. So they have cotton thread and cotton batting and they have been tested and you can put them in the microwave probably no more than like three minutes, but what are you microwaving for more than three minutes anyway? It's gonna boil. So um, for soup and stuff, if you wanna stick them in the microwave, you can. We don't usually, but you can. They are also machine washable and dryable. Dryable, is that a word? Sure. I had someone ask, and I've never mentioned this because it wouldn't have even occurred to me, I pre-wash all of my fabrics for everything because ew, I don't know where they've been. And it's part of my routine when I buy fabric that it automatically goes in the washer and dryer. So uh, you don't have to worry about them shrinking or anything. I, I washed mine, my test one, with the regular kitchen towels on warm and everything was totally fine. It came out wrinkled. So if you want to iron your bowl cozy, go for it but cotton's gonna wrinkle. So anyway, they're not quite as puffy as some that I felt, but I uh, did a test and I microwaved it for, I think two and a half minutes. And it was just like gently warm. It wasn't even, it wasn't hot or anything. So they may not feel puffy, but there is double layers of uh, cotton batting and they are microwavable. So that is, here's that stack. Um, and usually, and probably, I don't know why I say usually always, I always do a bag preview in Instagram stories and save it to highlights closer to time. So I'll go through with all the photos so you can go ahead and you can see what is going in the shop. Um, I'm not, sometimes the bag stuff for shop updates gets a little bananas. It does. That is a function purely of me being one person and only being able to make so many things. Um, so that is something I do recommend that people set alarms and that kind of stuff. I don't want it to be a feeding frenzy. It's not like I'm doing it on purpose. It literally is just because I'm one human. Uh, yarn is almost always repeatable. And so if you miss something you like, it'll be back. I do dyed to order sweaters quantities, but bags are a little different. So um, that's why I wanna make sure that you can actually strategize. And if you see something you really like that you can plan to get it first. So those are bowl cozies. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you, these are the things that like kind of broke my spirit just a tiny bit, but I do really like them. I don't know which pattern to show you. Let's do this one. <laughs> Cause it's Nutella and strawberries. So these are, I literally designed <laughs> these the end of 2020. We bought a house in early 2021 and they have been sitting and I haven't done anything with them for years but I was ready. So here they are. So this is a yarn bowl. So it is uh, fully interfaced. And so it's really sturdy. Oh my gosh, this focus situation. Sorry. So here it is. It's a yarn bowl, oh, but it's so much more. So they are designed and they fold down. The top folds down. So you can put your yarn in here. So if like you're at home and you're, I don't know, sitting in bed, messing up your elbow with your bad knitting posture like I do. <laughs> you can stick your yarn cake in here and it won't roll around. It does have a yarn guide. If you can see that, it's a little snap. It's a little yarn guide. 
I kind of hate it <laughs> as a yarn guide, but um, Yarn Spouse pointed out brilliantly that it's actually a really good place. Circular needles will kind of tuck in here. I have one that has my scissors in it. So it actually isn't just for a yarn guide, but there is a little snap here that you can use to kind of hold your yarn or like the working end of your yarn, or you can put needles in there, you can put scissors in there. And um, so they are super sturdy. They're not big. They like literally just hold one 100 gram cake of yarn. And they also have little snaps at the top. And they act as tiny little project bags too. Uh, one thing I've been using mine for is I have just, I'm using it as a yarn bowl. And then when I'm done knitting, I'll just close it up and shove it in my big project bag. I'll show you in a second. So that these are going in. These have been, they don't look, they don't look like nearly as much work as they are is what I'm saying. And they are, they were, there's a lot of precision. They have anything with boxed corners at the bottom just as another level of things. And there's a good bit of precision in figuring out like the best place for snaps in a way that is, that makes sense for it structurally as well as aesthetically. Anyway, it's just a lot, it's a lot of measuring. It's a lot of measuring and it's a lot of fiddly sewing, frankly. So I don't know how frequently these are going to appear. I have struggled a little bit with figuring out how to price these and honestly, <laughs> The more of them I made, the more the price went up. So these may actually end up being a little bit more than my sock-sized pyramid project bags, if you are familiar with my work. Again, I did this last time. I don't have one to show you right here. I could wander off. Maybe I'll wander off um, and show you one so you can see what I'm talking about. So anyway, these I pricing to be determined. I'm really enjoying mine. They're really cute. And they're very sturdy. Like they're really, like you can see... I'm, I'm pleased with them, however, they were a lot. Like, I, it took me two days to sew 12 bags, which is like, that's just, that's not something I can do regularly. But I will have, I think there's 11 because I messed one up and so I got an extra one. So I think there's going to be 11 of these. They're all different prints. They're Some of them are really cute. I mean, they're all really cute. I like my fabric. That's why I buy it. So that is what's going on here. I'm going to go grab a Pyramid Project bag. So enjoy this moment of not hyperactive chihuahua. It was a brief reprieve. <laughs> so this is the sock size project bag that I keep talking about and not showing. I just assume that if you're here, you know me already, which is not fair because that's not how the internet works. Um, but this is the sock size project bag. So these are $30. They're the same amount of materials and less work than the yarn balls. So <laughs> I hate capitalism. So anyway. I feel like these, the ones with the zippers hold a little bit more just because of their shape. So you can really kind of shove two projects in here. Um, anyway, so there will be, this size will be coming to the next update. I just haven't gotten there yet. So that is that. So there will be, at the next update, there's going to be the tea cozies, the bowl cozies, the yarn bowls. I am going to seamlessly, seamlessly, I tell you, transition into knitting by talking about this size project bag. This is the extra large sweater weather bag. Uh, I love these. I don't necessarily love making them because they're enormous and it's a lot to wrestle, but I have a fancy fun new sewing machine that seems to just do better with larger pieces because it's just uh, it's just bigger. I have a, I bought at the end of last year, I bought a Juki TL210Q, which is a semi-industrial machine. Oh boy, do I love it. I sewed bags on it this week and it's just, it's just, it's a straight stitch only. It does what it does so well. It's just, it's just a delight to work with. So um, I'm hoping the, the Juki will help a little bit with the giant bags. So anyway, this is the extra large sweater weather bag. These don't make a lot of appearances in the shop because they're a pain and because I take them for myself. So sorry. So that is, um, but, 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 but I planned when I ordered fabric last time a lot. So I think I have fabric for 12 of these going into the next shop update and they're all very fun. So anyway, uh, that's this bag. Um, I was going to show y'all, this is the yarn bowl that I have. So I've been using it as a yarn bowl. And then when I'm done, 
it gets snapped up and then it just gets shoved in here. These are enormous. They really, I should just, I love them. So, um, that, those are going in and then the regular sweater weather bags, which by the way are not big enough for most sweaters, but it was a cute name. Somebody came up with it like years ago when I first started and I don't have the heart to change it. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about knitting. I have not been knitting much. I mentioned last time I have tendonitis in my elbow and just my whole, whole like left side of my body has just been mad. And when I start hurting, I don't like to push it because that's bad for me. Also, it is the result of me not doing regular production work. My job is really active. And so if I've been resting a lot and sort of in a slower season, I will knit for many hours a day for many days on end and I get a lot of knitting done and then everything hurts and I'm dying. So I have almost no knitting to show you but I have some plans. So I did finish, which is very exciting, I did finish the sleeve, one sleeve, one sleeve, on my uh, Ferndell cardigan. This is by NCL Knits. I will link below. It's not showing up true to color. It's not quite so green. It's definitely a, a little more yellow. Gosh, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I, every time I pick this up, I'm like, oh. So I have, I finished my sleeve the other night. I think I did some, I think I did more decreases than the pattern calls for. This will be on my Ravelry project page so you can see what I did if you care. Um, it's a cabled front cardigan. It does not have the neck band or the button bands yet. So that's the last thing. So I just started on the sleeve, but I will say my my arm feels a lot better and it's not hurting as much. And so I think I'm gonna be able to knit a little bit more on it. I'm so ready. It's not like, I mean, I, I knit most of this in something ridiculous, like 10 days, I but I'm just, I'm so ready. I'm so ready to add it to my wardrobe. I have my cardigans. I love, I knit, the first few years I was knitting, I knit a lot of pullovers because I my tension, just like a lot of people, when I knit flat, is very very different and so my flat stockinette cardigans always looked kind of sloppy so even though I wear cardigans more I wanted to make pullovers because they were easier and then I was afraid of steaking cutting steaks sorry sorry purists I was afraid of cutting steaks um, and so that meant that I didn't make a lot of cardigans and then I learned how to do, do steaking and then cardigans were back on and I find now, this one's knit flat, this is not a steaked cardigan, that I will happily do cardigans knit flat if they're not plain stockinette. I think plain stockinette's always going to be steaked. But I just, I love my cardigans. I am obsessed with them. I looked back and all I knit in 2022, I knit socks and I knit cardigans and that was it. Um, so anyway, that's not true. I knit sweaters, but I only knit two pullovers and everything else was a cardigan. There we go. So anyway, that's the Ferndell. I love it. it. The yarn is Fiber Company Cumbria in Buttermere, I think is the colorway. It's the most beautiful heathered gold true mustard that's got some green in it. And it is a Merino Masham mohair blend and I love it very much. So I'm so ready. I'm so ready. So related to my arm, I, in my pain, ordered this book. I believe, I think it might even be out of print. I ordered it from a place in California whose name I can't remember that does primarily spinning equipment. Damn it, I can't remember what it's called. I'm very bad. But it is uh, Knitting Comfortably. It's the ergonomics of hand knitting by Carson Demers. And it's really good. I have struggled a little bit because I do, you know, <laughs> knit a lot. And also the motion that I use when I dye yarn, like it uses my elbow a lot. I'm lifting pans in and out of my dye cabinet. I mean, I, I'm hard on my body. Like I just, I am in a way that I have not always been. So I thought that it was a great resource. I learned a lot from it. I think it's something that I will continually refer back to. So if you have um, any kind of issues with pain when you knit, I have terrible posture all the time like I'm just I'm a slouchy human I'm short so I'm used to my feet not touching the ground in chairs and on the sofa and stuff so it's a whole thing so I've I've been working on being a little bit more aware of stuff and taking breaks there's a whole section on really good stretching I mean a really comprehensive section on stretching exercises so I do really recommend it as a reference if you are 
prone to doing bad things to your body, doing stuff that you love. So one more knitting thing. This is just so me. So I have a rule that is... It goes for a lot of things. I'm also a cook and a baker, so it goes for this too. It goes for clothes, it goes for yarn, it goes for everything. Is that I can have more or less within reason whatever I want as long as I make it myself. And I saw this pattern uh, a few weeks ago. I don't remember where I saw it. I lost my mind. It is the Ribblesdale Vest by Lily Kate Oates. Did I make that up? You know, I really should have this. Anyway, I'm going to link below. It's the Ribblesdale Vest. It is a brioche knitted waistcoat. And I like lost my ever loving mind. It is both perfect for like the 40s style that I'm very into at the moment and Hobbit style, which I am always very into. It is so, and I love, brioche is my favorite, one of my favorite things to knit. It is so cute. And I've been like, okay, well, I have the sweater on the needles and I have another vest. I have a color work vest that I shared last time that's on the needles. And I'm like, okay, okay, so I'm going to be responsible. And then like, I just, I can't be, res I can only be responsible in very short bursts. And um, we uh, reached the end of that. So I, because I have my rule, I actually this morning, and it's still in the dye pots right now, um, I decided that I was going to dye yarn for this. So I'm going to be using, so it's the same color, so the it, it, the pattern calls for worsted. I'm using DK with Surrey Silk held double. The, the It's the base of Surrey Silk floof. It's a Surrey alpaca and silk blend. It's like a mohair silk, but not mohair. And I knit a brioche sweater out of this combination of things, like a I think I did maybe I did a fingering weight but anyway the the Surrey is so soft and so I have yarn dyeing so the DK I'm going to use is the Polworth silk which bummer alert my supplier is not making it anymore they're subbing merino in for Polworth and I'm not like other girls about merino and so I'm gonna have to discontinue it but I have a little bit left so I'm using it on myself because I'm a monster so that is in the dye pots now. Anyway, so um, this is not showing up true to color at all. It's a little more red than this in real life. This is wine sap. I have been dyeing this colorway for years. It is more or less the exact color that I dye my hair. And it, no one ever loves it as much as I do, but I am obsessed. <laughs> it's like, for me, it's like the perfect brown, red, rust, combination um and I've wanted a sweater out of it but again like it's the same color as my hair so I can't really do that but I'm thinking of vest because like there's not sleeves you know it's a vest and it's this vest is like very low so I think it's going to be just fine and I'm not going to look like I'm wearing weird redhead camouflage so this is wine sap <sighs> I'm so like this people will just like it, no one gets excited about this like I do. I actually, and I'm going to be really awkward, more so than usual. Uh, it's in my socks currently. These are the Unicorns and Peacock Socks by Alex of Left, Stop, Left Sock, Best Sock, and they're amazing, and I love them. The main color is tea and oranges, but the, um, you know, the camera doesn't want to focus on me sticking my foot in the air like a total weirdo. I did shave my legs. Y'all are welcome. Anyway, so I love wine sap. I wish y'all did, but whatever. I'll just dye it for me. Okay, so that's coming up. So I really do, like, the vest situation has just, it's killing me. I ordered a, I think it's an, I say that, maybe it's an, is it a book from Interweave? It's an older book um, about Fair Isle knitting because I looked on Ravelry and all of the patterns I wanted for vests were in it. So it might be a lot of vests going on because... I'm transitioning, like my segues are flawless. flawless. So the blouse that I'm wearing is the absolute perfect style to wear under stranded color work vests, like truly perfect. I did a little photo shoot. We'll put a photo in maybe. Thanks, Steven. Um, here of with the academic vest by Skandier. And I have literally, I knit that vest almost two years ago. And I love it. And it's just never looked good with any of my shirts. And then I made this and I put it on. I was like, yes, 
This is what it deserves. So um, I absolutely love this blouse. This is just, just like, it's basically my dream blouse. It is a 1940s style, and um, in the pictures you can see it. I mean, it's tucked under overalls right now, but it is, it is, it buttons. It's got buttons. I made the buttons too. They're square. It's buttons. It has a, uh, like, super dramatic collar. The puff sleeves are perfect. The sleeves can be cuffed or uncuffed. So I have them cuffed right now. I just have them folded up. Um, it is gathered. The yoke is gathered in the back and the front, and it's just perfect. Like I, no notes. <laughs> so I made this, I, this was supposed to be my wearable muslin. It is a janky $8 a yard. I think maybe Robert Kaufman cotton lawn and it's ivory. It's not actually white. It's ivory. And I really did think that it was going to just kind of be garbage. And I was like, well, you know, I'll just go for it. I didn't make any fit adjustments. I didn't do anything. I cut my size, which unusually just however their sizing works out like it is literally my measurements usually I'm kind of in between things but I was not in between and I just thought I like would make it and I get used to the process and then I you know figure something out and make a real one and then I I was like halfway through it and I was like oh this is gonna work and it really 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 did I'm gonna show the pattern um envelope so well, here's the blouse. So the pattern comes with uh, the blouse, shorts, and pants. Um, so it's, I think it's like 20, I paid, I bought the paper pattern because I take up less space. And I think it was like $26, which for three patterns is not bad. Oh my gosh, I can't, I just can't, I cannot say enough good things about this. It was, I will say if you have never sewn anything with a collar before, the instructions weren't quite as detailed as some indie patterns. Like sometimes there's a lot of hand holding in indie patterns and there wasn't. It is a really, if you've done anything with a collar, it is a really straightforward construction. It is actually construction wise, really similar to the Folkwear Gibson Girl blouse that I made for my Edwardian walking suit in the fall. Like the yoke, the gathered yoke pieces. I was like, I feel like I've made this before. And then I remembered that it's that same kind of style. It was really fun. It was just delightful to make. Um, I actually liked that the instructions weren't super detailed because I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing now after years of kind of not. I, the instructions for the cuffs were a little confusing. So I uh, sewed them just like I do for the Carolyn. So there's actually, oh gosh, I can't really see, but there's no exposed, um, there is a wrinkle there where I sewed it poorly because it was the part where I was caring less. Um, but there's no exposed seam here. So I sewed them like pajama like I do pajama cuffs, um, but I'm, I love it. It's wrinkled because I've been wearing it. I wore it like three times last week. And a really good ivory top is like basically m my most central wardrobe staple. I love really good ivory tops. I can't wear pure white because I am pure white. So a, something with a little bit of like a warmth to it really works. And I just, I love it. It looks great with skirts. It looks great with my overalls it it's fitted in the waist so it doesn't bunch up quite well it is a little bit right now because I'm sitting weird but it it doesn't bunch up a ton there are a couple of fit things I could do I wanted to wear it before I start making a zillion of them and I yeah so I love it so the next thing I'm going to try is the pants I have been looking I don't wear a lot of pants <laughs> I wear overalls and that's about it because I have a really hard time with pants because my body is shaped in a way that I am multiple different sizes. I think my bottom is like four different sizes. So it's, and I'm petite. And so everything has to be shortened. And I have frankly some like adolescent trauma around buying pants because I would get stuff that fit in my hips and my butt. And there would be like that much space in the waist and like stuff never fit. And I always had to have things shortened and it was just like a whole thing. And so I am kind of afraid of pants. I have made pajama pants. I have made overalls and that is it. So these are very much my favorite style of pants. So they are super high-waisted, love, and they're wide-legged. So I'm really hoping, I've read lots of great things about this pattern and if the fit of the blouse is anything to go on, like it is entirely possible they won't be a nightmare, but I'm a little scared and I'm a little stressed. 
um, cause I've never made proper pants. I don't know why I'm so scared. Um, but I am. So I have a lot of chocolate brown. I got it on super sale at mood. It's chocolate brown cotton twill. So I think I'm going to actually end up doing an, a real, <laughs> like a real muslin with like actual muslin fabric for these to do a mock-up and then we'll go from there. So I'm really hoping, I'm hoping they will be my, the pants of my dreams. Um, it looks like they look great in linen, so I can have wide-legged linen pants in the summer. Um, I have lots of good stuff for it. I have a little bit of a corduroy hoarding problem, so there's like a lot of corduroy in my stash. So that is where I am going with that. I would, I would just love some high-waisted, super 40s pants. So that is next on my 30s, 40s wardrobe list. So this year I am trying really hard. I actually, I've talked about this on Instagram and I will have this conversation forever. I am not anti-stash and I'm not pro-stash because I sell yarn for a living. I love when y'all buy my yarn, but I want you to buy what you need, which is why I run my business the way that I do. I don't, I have issues with the way that we talk about stashes in the way that people talk about diet culture. I've seen quite a few things about like how gross it is that people overconsume and they're taking up so many resources and how, basically how dare you take up space with something that brings you joy. And I actually really love a stash. I don't have an enormous one. I have one that works for me. I generally buy things with an intention and it doesn't always happen. Um, but I like having the option. I like being able to have the supplies on hand when my creativity strikes. I like, I mean, I, I like it and I'm pro stash. And I think what's important is that your stash works for you. And I went a little bananas last year, not, you know what? I went as bananas as I went. And I definitely have this thing that happens, which is I will find a pattern I really like. And then I will be like, I need this in every single color and then I will buy all the supplies for it and then I'll make like a couple of them and then I'll be bored. <laughs> and so I'm trying to kind of rein that in a little bit. I'm also like really excited about, this is more fabric than yarn. Yarn I don't care about, whatever, it's yarn, it's my job. But for garment fabric and I have a lot of stuff that I'm really excited about that I just haven't gotten to yet and so I'm trying to think about that and think about how excited I am about what I already have before I buy a bunch of stuff. Now that said, I'm still me. <laughs> and uh, Fabric Mart had a sale on Liberty Tonalon and uh, mild things happen. So I did want, I, I knew I wanted this blouse in ivory. I think I have some cotton voile too. I'll make a couple of these in ivory because it's, it's what I'm going to wear the most of. But to go with my 30s 40s wardrobe I wanted this top in some prints and so I ordered some Liberty which is very fancy it was on sale it was like it's usually like $35 a yard and it was like 25 which is still you know twice what I would maybe normally pay but it's beautiful I love it I don't feel bad about it <laughs> so I'm gonna show you the print so this is this one has little strawberries on it <laughs> has little blue flowers and little strawberries. These are all very vintage inspired prints. Um, I wanted to kind of keep that feeling. So I really, I love this one with the little strawberries. This one is, ah, uh, can y'all see it? It does not want to focus when I get close to the camera. Oh, there we go, yay! This one is just adorable. These little golden blue flowers. It's so funny as I say I hate florals, but I love Liberty florals. I love William Morris florals and I love Rifle Paper Company florals and like I love them. I don't know if it's the scale. I don't know what it is but like I lose my ever-loving mind. I'm like I'm not frilly and then I see tiny little strawberries. I'm like Ehh! this is my favorite one. Do, do, do. It has like the colors are beautiful. I'm really into sort of dusty purples and blues and stuff but I don't know if you can see it has wee little blackberries. It's tiny blackberries. Uh, I'm obsessed with blackberries. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. 
So our house is next to a field that is owned by the power company and we live in the deep south and wild blackberries are a thing. They're a weed and the power company doesn't do anything to their field and so in uh, May we get an entire field full of wild blackberries and I go out and go picking and actually last week I made cardamom blackberry cardamom jam with some of our foraged blackberries so I'm very like for me the blackberries are a very important part of spring and just kind of part of feeling connected to my home and anyway so the blackberry fabric like I didn't even I don't even think twice about that one or any of them frankly so there will be this blouse in those fabrics at some point. I Liberty is one of those things. It's one of those fabrics that like <laughs> when I started sewing, I was like, I will never feel brave enough to cut into fabric that costs that many dollars. Now I'm like, eh, whatever, it'll be fine. So I'm excited about that. So I've got that coming. I've got a new vest coming. I just, I'm having a nice time this I planning my projects around a theme just works well for my brain. But I'm having, I'm also having a really nice time with the wardrobe project because I'm, I'm recognizing how much of my style already fits into that aesthetic. It's fitting in, I'm not just like making all these new things that don't work with anything else that I have. I mean, I made the headband in 2020, like the overalls. I mean, these are not of any kind of vintage style overalls, but like these silhouettes just kind of all work together and my color sense is what my color sense is. And so it's it's kind of, it's been really fun to start working these pieces in. And like the vest that I wore this with that I made, I mean, it just, it all works together. I'm very, in some ways I'm very consistent. So that has been very fun. So that is that. I am going to be starting in on uh, regular sized bags next week. Um, and then I get to start thinking about yarn. Yarn dyeing is, I don't know how people do it, all the time like it is it's physically hard it's it's a lot I love it I love doing it but it's definitely something that I have to balance with other stuff so I will be planning colors I have some new colorways brewing I I don't do I don't I do collections sometimes but I don't do like limited collections and all of my colorways are repeatable and the longer I do this the bigger my dye notebook gets and so I'm like trying to figure out what I want to do as a restock because as you can tell I don't know if you can see these these shelves they are not full <laughs> at all and so I'm, I'm trying to think about a restock and what I want to do and anyway you can suggest things I may not get to them but you can always suggest things worst I can do is not do them which I may not. So that's what's going on there. So I think that's it. I seem incapable of doing these less than an hour. So I hope you have enjoyed your, uh, your, your, your warm beverage and a little bit of a crafty chatter. Um, you can find me over on Instagram where I am the most active slash obnoxious <laughs> um, at uh, Republica underscore Unicornia underscore yarns. Um, I'll link that all below. The website's below. All the patterns I talked about are below. Whatever. Like, you can find out what I, you know, what I'm up to in all kinds of ways. So, thanks for stopping by. I will see you next time. Bye!